on a dark, windy night on Costa Rica's Pacific coast. This beautiful Olive Ridley sea turtle mother has returned to the exact same beach where she once hatched out of an egg herself decades ago. Only this time, she is laying eggs of her very own. Unfortunately, her eggs are not safe here. This mother's nest will face many natural forms of danger, such as predators, erosion, and the tides. However, there is another form of danger that looms along the beach during the night. Poachers are on the prowl. four-part series of Take to the Wild, we are heading down to Costa Rica to help investigate the turtle poaching problem, where we will be joining up with and assisting Dr. Helen Feasley, who will be testing out her new state-of-the-art technology, which will allow her to better understand and build a more detailed picture of the poaching system occurring nightly along many of the beaches in Costa Rica where turtles lay their eggs. The mission ahead is full of obstacles to overcome, and not everything goes to plan. But when you have a chance to make a difference, no matter how big or small, in the future of a species, it is always going to be worth it. Sea turtles have been on planet Earth for more than 100 million years. Gliding gracefully through the seas, they are one of the most majestic, loved, and significant icons of the oceans. However, these beautiful marine reptiles are in trouble and facing many different threats to their long-term survival. Higher average temps of the sand in which they nest are causing mostly females to be born. Increasing water temperatures are killing off the food that they eat, introduced predators are destroying their nests, and poachers patrol many of the beaches where turtles lay their eggs and collect every nest they can find to sell illegally. While sea turtles lay a lot of eggs, it is estimated that as few as 1 in 10,000 baby sea turtles actually survive to adulthood with all the challenges that they face. Even if a baby turtle survives, it won't reach the point where it can reproduce for several decades. While these animals have had such a long existence on our planet, that existence is being tested like never before. It hangs in a delicate balance and they need all the odds they can get. Poaching does not help that balance, and we need to better understand the poaching system in order to protect the nests and give the next generation of sea turtles a fighting chance at simply making it to their first swim. All right, Hi. Helen. This is going to be fun. <laughs> what do you want to know? So why are we here in Costa Rica? Yeah, basically I needed two volunteers to help me um, with my project. I'm looking at poaching rates in Costa Rica. So at the moment we have a situation where turtle eggs are extracted for human consumption and the eggs go from the beaches to the markets. We know that they're appearing in the markets and we know that they're leaving the beaches. What we would be very well informed to know or what we'd like to know about this is what trade routes are they taking, where are the eggs going when they leave the beach, have we got patterns that we can start looking at potentially enforcing the law by getting ahead of these poachers rather than being behind them. The way we're doing this is we've got um, some pretty cool technology which are the 3D printed turtle eggs. Um, these eggs have a GPS GSM tracking device inside them and what we can actually do with those eggs is place them into nests that are vulnerable to poaching. When the poachers take the nest we can actually track them and follow and see where they go. That's the idea. Our Stinao was chosen mostly, mostly because we have such a large number of turtles nesting here and also because at the north end of the beach we know that there's a lot of poaching at this end of the beach and it's very possible that the eggs are going to move into the inland, into the open markets. I spent quite a lot of time, about a year, in and out of the markets in San Jose and the Central Valley looking for illegal species eggs and honestly the only thing that we're finding that are being sold illegally is the olive ridley turtle eggs. So it's like, okay, where are they most likely to be coming from? Ostiadal is the biggest nesting beach in Costa Rica for olive ridley eggs. It's got the most access for poachers. It's, it's kind of likely to be the biggest, the biggest um, source of illegal, illegal eggs.
This is a 3D printed um, fake sea turtle egg. On either side of it, there's two little doors. There's one here that's slightly longer. And what this door opens up to is um, a place to put in a SIM card. And then on the other side, there's a little port here. This door enables you to actually charge it up. This is what the eggs actually look like. So what we're actually looking at here is that I've basically cut the top off. But we have a battery, well, in this case, two battery packs, a transmitter. This has an SD uh, uh, SIM card. And on the other side, there's the little charging port. In the event that the nest hasn't been poached, um, the eggs are really, like, they're incredible. They kind of age in the same way as turtle eggs do. And this is an example of one that I pulled out of a nest after it had been incubating for 55 days. And as you can see, okay, it's covered in sand, but also, like, there's more dimples in it than there were. And it just, this actually looks a lot more like a turtle egg coming out of a nest. And that's one of the advantages of technology that we have, is that as it ages inside the nest, it looks more and more real. So even though it looks slightly more obvious going into the nest, coming out again once it's covered in sand and a bit of um, moisture from the, from the nest, um, you, get, you get a lot more realistic coming out and going. All right, well, we got washed out today. Really did? Yeah. No. Sucks. No feeling <laughs> in getting petrol. No petrol, no access. No. Uh, falling no over the place. <laughs> yeah, I almost got hit by a tree. No injuries. No injuries today. No injuries so far. Yeah, that's good. No, we haven't. There might be a murder. Yeah, might be. yeah that'd, that'd be the only injury that's going to have to take place. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Our wet clothes is going to stay wet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this? I've come to the conclusion if it's slightly damp, it's going to dry quicker on my body. Yeah. <laughs> this is our laundry room. <laughs> exactly. And hopefully if rice, uh, rice stops fire. just jinxing, uh, jinxing us and everything will go smoothly. So he can't keep his mouth closed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the issue at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even breathe. So what's the plan today, Helen? We are going to ride out the storm, mm -hmm. wait for the weather to chill a little bit. Maybe that will happen in November. <laughs> and what's today, October 5th? October the 5th, <laughs> yeah. Um, when we do get a break in the weather, we'll go down to the beach and check on the nest that we do actually have one egg in. Perfect. And then tonight, tonight there's a thunderstorm um, predicted. So hopefully after that, we'll be able to start getting on the beach. Actually, put some of these eggs out. Awesome. Yeah, maybe. And then uh, that looks like a murder weapon right there. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Bryce control. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quite a useful device because when he opens his mouth, which he does a lot, a lot, you can actually hold the tongue. And <laughs> I can talk without a tongue. Yeah. <laughs> you can think that about I'll try. <laughs> there you have it. Tonight we have a th thunderstorm. Putting out some eggs, maybe a murder. We had some time to kill before the sun set and our sea turtle work would begin. So we decided to take the opportunity to search for some local wildlife before nightfall. Did you get that? Yeah. What a jump. He's going down. We got a little cat-eyed snake, very common, little non-venomous species of rainforest snake here in Costa Rica. We see them a lot around water sources because they love to eat frogs and other amphibians. And uh, they're nocturnal, and uh, he's a cute little guy, just uh, he's really young, pretty new to the world. They get probably about two feet long, I'd say. I mean, when they get older, they kind of fade and go to this like uniform, darker color. Um, but when they're younger, they got these really vibrant uh, spots and patches. You see them? What's that? You see them?
got some uh, howler monkeys. Intel's gonna fly the drone in from uh, out there. I'm gonna try to get some shots down below. I'm gonna put the camera on them. Here we go. Check this guy out. That is certainly the one in charge. And right now, that calling he's producing is letting me know that this is his territory. That loud, raspy howling is where they get their name, Howler Monkey. You can hear the howls from miles away. They use these howls to establish things like dominance and territories. Oh, that one's got a little baby. See, it's hanging upside down on the mom's belly. She's... Hey, buddy. Cutie. This cute, mischievous looking animal is called the Quadamundi, or Quadi for short. They are related to raccoons and act quite similar, kind of like Central and South America's version of the raccoon. Right now he's sniffing around for food. They are highly intelligent and that nose can find food just about anywhere. I guess he was hoping Angel would share that protein bar in his backpack. Sorry little buddy, go find some bugs to eat. Session. We got the howlers. Hell yeah. howlers. That was freaking epic. Especially when uh, he traversed just across the vines. It was awesome. And then I also was able to film uh, the kawaii just right up the road here. He came right up to me. Just uh, one hell of an adventure. And Costa Rica has been treating us right. Or so we thought. <laughs> Put it lightly. We're gonna be walking in this for the next eight hours, and uh, you know what? It's worth it. After he gets his black shirt on, uh, we have to go basically stealth mode. All black. That way we become undetectable on the beach. We're trying to fly under the radar as much as possible. It's our work is top secret. If anyone knew about it, uh, work could get out to the poachers, and uh, it might ruin the project. So. Um, you know, we gotta take uh, all precautions necessary. I got a white shirt on, but I'm gonna put my black one on soon. I'm just layering out for tonight, because it's gonna be a cold one. <laughs> on next week's episode of Take to the Wild, our first attempt at deploying the decoy eggs becomes a battle against the weather, as a big storm moves in and makes work on the beach a little more challenging. Subscribe so you can stay tuned for more Take to the Wild adventures.